All right, I, it might not be clear from the camera here, but as soon as we cut to B-roll, people will see that this is heavily modified and carved up foam core. And I am always saying that cardboard is the gateway drug to making. And this is a perfect example. You're doing actually really advanced sculptural work with a planar material, foam core. Yeah, and just a, just a hot glue gun. And it, it is funny, like you're saying, the gateway drug, um, I really got into terrain making at 16 after just drooling over one too many white dwarves, you know? Right. <laughs> and getting a copy of HeroQuest and wanting to expand on building. And I remember, but I, we, I didn't have the internet. There was yeah. no, um, well, the internet existed, but we didn't have it. There was sure. no YouTube, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, other than a couple of like pictures in a white dwarf, I didn't know how to make stuff. So I started making stuff out of this but black, like black foam cards. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering why it sucked, you know? Because I didn't know. <laughs> and um, so it's, it is strange to, to progress up product to go to the very beginnings. But w what's happened now is, um, like I said, when I, after I spent all that time making Hagglethorn Hollow and the, I was really happy with the modularity of it, mm -hmm. but even when I finished it, every time I finish a sculpture or a project, I'm like, now I know what I'm doing, I could do that way better, but right. you've got to move forwards. And I put that out into the world and it was great and it yeah. led to a career in terrain making. So now um, with printable scenery, I, I want to, all the ideas I, I had on Hagglethorn are really, uh, they're really complicated, but I want to make work. And because I'm art directing, um, you know, really talented uh, 3D sculptors now instead of hand sculpting it myself, yeah. and um, there's a lot of back and forth and, mm -hmm. and And also, Hagglethorn Hollow was hand sculpted and cast, right. and 3D printing has um, limits to um, undercuts and angles and stuff, but I, I don't, um, I don't ever want to limit what the building looks like. You don't want to accommodate that in your design. Which drives my uh, business partner, Printable Scenery, <laughs> sure. <man> sometimes. <laughs> um, but he, he knows Printable Scenery so well, and I know what I want to see out of it. And together, we keep pushing each other to get to places that originally we were like, we can't do that. Okay, so tell me how so the foam card, card plays in. Um, uh, we, we've got, so I wanted, w we discussed this modular um, stack and swap system where you've got, where every building looks like its own building, but because things, you know, things take a long time to print. Right. Right. And so we want the people printing the stuff to get the most value out of out of their print. And so versatility. Versatility. And I wanted to do some more buildings, and I wanted to do a series that lined up with things like Hagglethorn Hollow and Country and King and other products have developed. So people that already have have brought some can expand their range further. Yeah. But mainly, so this. It starts with these these bases. They separate and they. And when I make these, I have a little um, miniature with different bases, and I play around with them like right, the Sylvanian right. families, just to make sure that everything works. But that roof can now swap onto that, and this and can, oops, this can, this can go here. Um, it's all a bit scrunched because this came in my suitcase, but it <laughs> held up really well. I thought, you know, it really but did. Then also, these roofs can now swap out. So you started out playing around with foam board like this. Uh, I'm curious why you go back to it. Is it specifically because of the limitations or is it because this is just sort of the language that you speak? It's actually, there's heaps of benefits, right? Yeah. So, so first of all, um, we don't get um, all the way down into a modeling stage and, and, and say like, we're having a bit of trouble printing your design, but because I'm really happy with the design, I mm -hmm. made the coolest looking thing I could. Right. But again, print, printing still has limitations. It's engineering. Yeah, but we don't want to, respect those limitations, we want to kick them out the door, you know? Sure. And and, and so with foam modeling, I can make this, and um, Matt, who I'm working with, who d knows exactly what he's doing, can say, well, see here, this needs to be at that angle. And so before I've drawn it, before we've worked with a modeler, I can go, yeah, good point, craft night, bam, hot glue, right? So and you're doing your early iteration of design in this because it's so much easier to modify it and talk about it. Yes, and I can also give this to the modeler, they can have it right, on their desk. Right, right. Also, like the reason why I feel Hagglethorn came out the way it did is because I'm a tactile 3D guy. Yeah. And I'm coming up with um, ideas and shapes and modularity, modularity options with this yeah, that I can yeah. do in a pencil sketch. And and e even like say, say this, this building here. So here's some, um, what do we got here? So. Is that the first yeah. So these so, aren't just design models, they're also discussion, they're actually they're actually collaboration models. Yeah. So this is about this is about three weeks' work, but it might save us three months work. Right. And and so here, here, oh, here's, here's a here's a little um, cottage, right? Oh. And if you want, you can make you can make this opening here a wall, or you can make it an additional shop front, right? Or 
you put, you flip that floor, you make two of them, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stick that together like that. Oh, they're reverses of each other, I see. And then you print this oh! piece, and now you can either have it as um, the slums, or <laughs> you can flip it around this way, uh, and it goes from the slums to a tavern, and then you can also push it out with market stalls. Dude. And, and so for, 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 for the bits that you've printed, yeah. you've got like four options now, and so it's not the same building every game. But right, also, right. of course, this, to make it even work further, these bottom floors also, also work for these floors. Oh my gosh. And, and this is just the first three weeks of the discovery right, process. Right, right. But then we get to the really, for me, what I find the biggest bonus of working like this okay. is uh, I can, I now photograph these, <gasps> print it on an A3 paper, go to my light table, and now you all can, of the details that I obviously can't, I don't want to be bothered with doing in foam card because otherwise just sculpt the damn thing. Like I, I can now illustrate like this. That is amazing. That's an amazing process. And But where I've been able to go with printable scenery, so here's the other building, here's yeah, the other building yeah, there. Yeah. But where I've been able to go um, with printable scenery that I couldn't go with in Hagglethon Hollow, Hagglethon Hollow has a boathouse which is made out of a boat and it's got like a dragon mast and I did a little video where I spent three days sculpting that mast and then we scanned it and then we shrunk it down and th 3D printed it and put it on there. But it was three days work just because I wanted a little dragon head this big, right? Yeah. yeah. But now, since someone else has sculpted it, <laughs> and, and we, we've, worked with, um, we, we've worked with a really talented team to, to make their, their digital sculpting replicate my hand sculpting. Yeah. Um, now I can go, right, I want, I want every oh, beam. Oh, call outs and of course. So that, those were just beams, but now they're dragon beams, right? And then, um, and, and because we're in this process and because we're workshopping and because we're trying to make the most modular thing ever, Matt, who I worked with, had this genius idea, is what if, what if the, all the beams oh! are, are removable? Oh my God. Right, we're still workshopping this, the, the, but they come out really easily, there we go. And so, if you want a normal looking building, you yep, get a normal yep, looking yep, building. Yep. Or you could turn it into the Dragon Guild or something like that. Dude, this so is amazing. Samantha Barker, um, one of our young modelers, has been working on this. And this is, um, I'm pretty sure, yep, so this is this floor. So see, oh, that's what, okay, okay. So that, that's where, that's through, and the balcony is going to be separate and uh -huh, modular. Uh -huh. And, um, oh. And so she's she's um, helped us figure out all of the um, the challenges, and there are lots. But she's she's great at taking out direction, and we've ironed out all the kinks. And so we've now spent a lot of time making sure floor one works great. Right. And now she's speeding through floor two, floor three, and now that we've ironed out all of the kinks because of the foam card process, sure, 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 and, and come up with ideas that we wouldn't have if I had just given them a drawing of a building. Uh, and now she knows what's on the other side. She knows what's happening in the interior. I think that what this also highlights is, is that people don't realize that within uh, uh, engineering and artistic endeavors, people are saddled with very different abilities to picture things in their minds. Mm. And as creative people, we are, it's tr what is trivial for us sometimes to hold a really complex set of things in our head. It's really complex for other people. And these kinds of models make talking about that so, so uh, intuitive. Well, and it is great because like, you know, like how I found um, Mikey on a Labyrinth Facebook page yeah. and now he's our full-time sculptor. I spent years and quite a few sculptors finding someone that could make my drawings look like how I sculpt. Right. And when right. we found them, it was a dream come true. And it's, a, it's the same um, thing with Sam. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, good catch. Thank you. Uh, we'll just print another one. Um, it's, the same, it's the same thing with, with Sam. It's, um, uh, she's already good, but we're training her up to get this look and each next floor is going to be, be faster. But also, I'm not, I'm not a great... Um, graphic artist. Yeah. I spent my life drawing trolls and goblins. But <laughs> I, I don't want to be limited to the fact that I'm a little off when I draw a building in perspective. Right, right, right. And right. so now with this foam core stuff, my perspective is awesome because I'm I'm tracing over a model that I've already built. Right, and right, I, right. And then I can you can see there's bits in here where I go, I'm holding up a miniature to it. I go, well, how big should I draw <laughs> these tiles on this roof? I go, hold on. And I just draw a bunch of tiles, hold up a miniature to it. It's like, yeah, it looks like he built that. And then I can go into this and, and I know the scale better. Do you know the story about uh, the boat on the head of the giant from Time Bandits? 
I know it's one of your favorite. We talked about it in our first video. You're going to do a cosplay one day. If someday. You past it. Someday. But one of the things I remember seeing in an interview with Terry Gilliam was that he had done a quick sketch on a napkin and handed it to the art department for the boat. Yeah. And that when the art department brought it back, they had literally replicated the his exact oh drawing with all of its weirdness and proportional inconsistencies. And he was like, he was actually surprised and delighted. Yeah. Because it was so much more, it was so much more personality. Well, that, that's exactly why um, when I showed you the um, the gloaming characters, I start, I start, I mean, I'm tracing my own work, so it's not technically cheating. Yeah. But like, I start with a free sketch that I'm not worried about how good it looks. I'm not worried about where rubbing marks just are. Just a proportion my, like, and form. It. And I just, because I'm not worried about making mistakes. And because of that, I get these shapes that I wouldn't, if, if I was drawing it, right. if I was drawing the first time drawing. Right, right. And then I, then I trace, and once I've got, sometimes I might even scan that, put it into Photoshop, warp it and bring the proportions sure, that sure. I didn't get right and then I'll trace over that and it's just different tools to help you get that thing but I'm all about that first free draft capturing the magic that yeah. happened in that Terry Gilliam sketch and, and I, I found that um, when I was illustrating the Squickawonkers for Evangeline Lilly that's where I developed that shorthand of drawing something quick and then I, I used to go okay that's their character and I'd go to redraw that character and I'd finish it and it was a much better looking drawing in terms of a render but a lot of the character had gone you yeah know? yeah and so I just ended up realizing that I'm gonna draw the character really fast and then I'm gonna trace it and then I'm gonna get the detail into the the original burst of energy I love it yeah I really love it um when can I start printing up some of these, Johnny? Tomorrow. We'll get, Excellent! Uh, Matt will have his people give you the files before we leave. <laughs> I'm so happy so about this is, that. This is the early days of this um, this township, which we're calling uh, Gloaming Port. So this is, like we were talking before, this is the port that sits outside the open portal to the gloaming. Got it. So in the same way that there was a gold rush to Deadwood, yeah. this is like the medieval fantasy version of Deadwood, where the resource is everything that's in the gloaming, and everyone and their dog has come to it legally and roughly, <sighs> and in all the horrible ways humans are, yeah. kind of yeah. ex extort and manipulate and compromise this ecosystem. And, and the, the adventure is kind of, how you, the, that ecosystem is fighting back, because that's really important to me. Uh, and also, yeah. which members of the gloaming have sold their people out and joined the humans, and they're trading information, and so you've got lots of factions to play off, um, but it's not just boring humans, you've got all these different species to, to have fun with, and it this is, is that township. I, I always feel that when we get to hang out, Johnny, that you take me to you take me to places I have never been well, that's, that's and allow me and allow me to almost live there. That's one of the things I love about the way you design stuff is it really, it feels like a hug. It feels like you're, you're pulling me into oh, the world. You know, that's the best thing you could say because, and I'm so glad to hear that from you because the whole point of making the gloaming into an accessible kind of campaign for fifth edition is because of, you know, since building the gloaming, falling in love with D&D, getting people to become an active participant in a world that I really love, and hopefully, like you say, that love translates into a place they want to visit. I'm just doing everything I can like, to make sure that when they visit there, when they go into this room, they can see every bit of furniture, and they know what's in that furniture, they know who's selling what in that shop, yeah. they know um, which butcher's wife he's having an affair with, and which kid he doesn't like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like every, yeah. Everything is gonna be, and then you go into floor two, and it's a whole other three pages of, of content. I'm also there. sure that you're designing stuff that can surprise you with what people do with it. Well, like I said, like when I'm working with Matt Rauscher, um, given him more rain than I thought I was going to, and just being so pleasantly surprised with, um, he gets it so well that when he comes up with ideas, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that happened in the gloaming. And it's not like, <laughs> okay, that can happen. It's yeah, like, yeah. wow, that happens too, you know? So I've been taken on an adventure in a world I started 20 years ago. That's really um, and amazing. That's, and and like, it's like through the people I've come into contact that have reached out um, through your tested videos, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just, you know, because um, I never put myself out online before them and stuff like that. And um, just the, the community that gathers around makers and and gamers as yeah. well, it's just so pleasant, you know? I agree, I agree. One of the, I, 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 I'm a big believer in no gatekeeping and I, I find that in the maker community out online is it's that ethos has deeply infused uh, as much, as many parts of the community as I have encountered. Well, that's what I got from Richard Taylor and yeah. letting, you know, Greg Tozer and Jamie Viswark in the sculpting room. It was always, um, here's, here's our worldly wisdom. And yeah, it's amazing. So we're gonna include links in the description so that people know where to go find this stuff. Johnny, thank you so much, man. This is so thank beautiful. You. Dude. <laughs>
See you guys next time. Thank you for watching that video. I want to tell you about our demerit badges because we know that being a maker is a lifelong enterprise of trying new things and learning new skills, and it is also about repeatedly messing everything up. And we like to celebrate that because failure is not just an option, it is intrinsic to the creative process. And to that end, we have three new bundles of demerit badges right now on tested-store.com. We've got your shop tool fails demerit badge bundle up here on top. Here in the middle, we have the everyday Day whoops demerit badge bundle. And at the bottom, we've got my favorite, the shit happens demerit badge bundle. You can get any one of these bundles and we are considering offering a bundle of all 24, not those, of all 24 demerit badges we have released, but we're not sure what to call it. If you have a suggestion, put it in the comments.